That's that big. the problem? Isn't that the okay. problem when it comes down to KD? I believe, you know, KD is a special talent. We understand one of the best basketball players, if not the best in the world. But when it comes down to holding his teammates and his quote-unquote brothers accountable, he does a poor job at that. He holds the media and people on the Twitter app more accountable than he do the players in his locker room. What do you mean he's going to stay out of that? Like, we're talking about a guy that you plan with Kyrie Irving to come down to Brooklyn and play together. Are you saying part of his job is to keep Kyrie yeah. there to make sure that works? To make sure. I mean, part of saying? his job is to be honest with his brother. Okay. Part of his job is to hold uh, his brother accountable. He's had his back throughout this whole time. When people attack Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant attacked those people. At what point are you going to hold him accountable and say, hey, bro, hey, listen, I'm tired of it. I love you. But, KP. Death, but when are you going to provide for me what I need you to provide and be and have my back? Go ahead, RC. But I'm saying, but Kendrick, you don't know if, if, if Kevin Durant is doing that behind the scenes. And now, I don't know if he is either, but he's not supposed to come out on a podcast and say I'm holding Kyrie uh, accountable. He's not supposed to come out on a podcast and talk about Kyrie Irving's business. You know that as well as I know that. KP, this is how it works, and you from a place that's just like from a place like that, that where I'm from. I'm with you when you write. And I'm with you when you're wrong in public. Now, if he feels that Kyrie is doing some things or he wants Kyrie to come back, you have that conversation with Kyrie. But you certainly don't come out on a podcast and uh, voice I that didn't. publicly because uh, now it even it messes up the situation even more. I didn't say I didn't say you had to come out publicly. But when you look mm -hmm. at Kyrie actions, are you going to sit up here and tell me? that Ke Kevin Durant has been holding Kyrie Irving accountable. Or, see, you have kids. If your kids and you're going to yeah. somebody else's house for a kickback or a family gathering, and your kids are going to these people's houses and destroying these people's houses, <laughs> jumping on couches and things to that nature, you, <laughs> what are those people going to say? Though, hey, no, no. Wait, what are these I, people going to say? They're going to say, you know what? RC is not doing a great job at home disciplining their kids. But if your kids go to their house and, they, and they're sitting down and they're being polite and they're saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, and those people are saying, oh, they're just some sweet babies, then guess what? Those people are going to say, Ryan Clark is doing an excellent job at his house. That's <laughs> not the same thing. It is the same thing. It's not the same thing. It is the same thing. He says that because his kids are always the sweet ones, right? Yeah. RC, I bet. Maybe, maybe not. All right, hey, but oh Wendy, this gosh. brings up a really good point, though. Re really, really quick, producers. I know we want to move on, but I just have to say, we're talking about accountability, and I wonder if there is still interest among all these teams in Kyrie because one of the biggest things here is. It's hard to hold him accountable. He's just a different dude, Wendy. He's a guy who kind of marches to the beat of his own drummer. So when these other teams are looking at him, even if he does opt out, is he going to be the kind of player, even for $6 million, that they want to bring in, given the history and everything else? For $6 million, the Lakers would crawl over glass to get him, for sure. <laughs> for a $200 million contract extension, um, where you have to give him all of that money and all of that trust, no, that is that is a much smaller list, but the list does exist and something happened last night that I found probably to me the biggest story of last night other than the change in the number one pick expected is what the New York Knicks did in relation to their chances with Kyrie Irving mm. 24 hours ago. I was on here saying I am not seeing the Knicks doing anything that indicates they're interested in Kyrie. Well, that changed. Last night, the Knicks traded out of the lottery, not out of the 27th pick. Mm -hmm. The Knicks traded out of the lottery and picked up three first-round picks in doing so and completely maneuvered with, with three trades in about 15 minutes to begin to clear salary cap space. And the Knicks, as we sit here today, have about $20 million in salary cap space they didn't have yesterday, and they now have, believe it or not, eight first-round draft picks that they are able to trade to either clear Ooh. more space or use in trades for players. The situation that we believe is their number one priority is Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson and the Knicks are mm. in a free agent situation like I've never seen in my career because his father is now on the Knicks coaching staff. The, the president of the Knicks held him as a baby 
And the son of the president of the Knicks, Leon Rose's son, Sam, is one of Jalen Brunson's agents, and he is an unrestricted free agent. I promise you, the Knicks are more aware of Jalen Brunson's intentions than any free agent in mm -hmm. any team in the history of free agency. There's yeah. no way that they don't know. So why are they clearing this cap space? Are they clearing this cap space because they know that they're going to be able to get Jalen Brunson? Or are they clearing this cap space because Kyrie Irving has suddenly become potentially available? And I would not prioritize Kyrie Irving if I were the Knicks, and I don't even, I'm not saying that the Knicks are doing that. But when you look at the Knicks' moves last night, Kyrie Irving went from a, well, maybe, I guess we could talk about it, to a viable option if they want to go that route. Kyrie now has an option that if he were to opt out of his contract, the Knicks, without too much work, could open up a cap space to sign him. They also could do it for Jalen Brunson. So, the big development in the Kyrie Irving sweepstakes yesterday wasn't this list that Woj got. I mean, it was very good reporting and certainly was fascinating. A team actually started making moves that could potentially get Kyrie Irving in New York with that rivalry with the Nets. And so this is going to be fascinating to watch what else the Knicks do between now and next Wednesday and then the opening of free agency next Thursday. Wow. Just mm. wow. When you think about the implications of all that. And that Kyrie could end up there, that Jalen Brunson could end up there, and what that would do for the Knicks, just remarkable to think about. All right. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.